Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 Long War of the Chosen Class Guides. My name is Saiken and today we're going to take a look at the Technician or Technical as it is current, uh, uh, currently implemented in Long War. Before we start, shameless self-plug as per the usual. Please subscribe uh, to the channel and leave a comment uh, down below if you find uh, the videos helpful. Now, Back to the Technician. When I started playing Long War originally, it was probably the class that I had the hardest time warming up um, with because it felt that uh, there was not enough differentiation between what the Technician uh, was bringing to the table as opposed to what other classes are bringing to the table. It is originally a class uh, that uh, was created uh, as a spin-off from uh, the specialist with a focus on its so-called um, uh, sidearm, uh, which you can see right here. They have a gauntlet, and that gauntlet is um, uh, probably the closest vanilla explanation. is kind of a heavy weapon slot where you can slot something uh, into uh, into that gauntlet. The uh, technician has both rockets on the one hand side which is kind of the heavy weapons of uh, the um, uh, mech suits or exosuits, as well as uh, the flamethrower, which are the other types of heavy uh, weapons. And uh, you uh, combine that into kind of the standard kit in, in, the, uh, in this particular class. The reason why I had a problem warming up with the class to begin with is I really didn't fully understand uh, which role the technician was supposed to fill. Um, and it isn't getting obvious immediately. Now, you can play the technician as a um, cover removal um, entity, which I think the class is absolutely well suited to do so. But the class also offers you uh, the option to play it as a hybrid between fire support and um, and cover removal, or even go um, full all out into your um, uh, gauntlet and use the flamethrower as a sort of AOE crowd controller. Because in Long War, when an enemy starts to burn, that enemy essentially is crowd controlled and is taken out of uh, the game. Just keep that in uh, that. Just keep that in mind. Uh, that that's a really, really strong application for uh, their skills. Mm, personally, I like to play them as a hybrid role because uh, they get quite a few good skills um, with their gun, um, and their rockets as well as their flamethrower have incredibly limited ammunition. Uh, if they would double all of that and still offer you uh, the option like in the original Long War where you could take additional rockets with you, I would still play the um, Technician as a pure Rocketeer and cover remover. But given where we currently are, there are just not enough rockets um, uh, in a normal mission. And uh, if you only focus on rockets and cover removal or only focus on your uh, flamethrower, you might end up in a situation where you don't have enough ammunition to go through the entirety of the mission, which is why I personally like that middle tree uh, in the specific case of the class. And I'm trying to uh, look at them as a support fire support class that can reduce armor from the enemies as well as um, cover whenever needed and quite frankly they are pretty good at what they are doing now they are not a bottom tier class they're probably not the strongest class either but the way that i build them uh, they uh, dish out some good damage and uh, support in a serious way let's jump into uh, the different tiers lance corporal first find the hall allows your uh, rockets to be more accurate. It probably goes without saying that one of the biggest problems with the uh, rockets are their incredibly uh, incredible lack of accuracy. And if you've ever played Long War, you will know how bad it feels if a rocket hits your own uh, folks or just goes completely off target. So uh, for me, that's almost a given. Suppression is nice, other classes do it better. Roast with the uh, flamethrower, if you're going for a dedicated flamethrower build, um, that uh, could be an option, but even then I would probably not take it. I don't like uh, the abilities uh, to uh, to force enemies out of cover. For me, that's that plus uh, with a combination that and Overwatch together feels like an unnecessarily complicated way. Why wouldn't you just remove the cover and just kill the enemy instead? 
um, and not make it that difficult. Uh, but that's just my take on it. You can, if you're using this plus Overwatch together, set up a couple of nice combinations. So uh, Corporal, biggest booms. Grenades and rockets inflict critical damage, which isn't bad. Um, but it's also not that good because it doesn't really do anything uh, about uh, removing cover. Uh, crits cannot happen on um, on objects, uh, which uh, means that um, it is not as good as you might uh, think it would be. Uh, on the other hand, Fortify with 20 uh, defense uh, as a free action is absolutely fantastic. Talked about that in many other class guides. Uh, you want to be able to withstand uh, fire. You're kind of at, in a midfield, the way that I'm playing it, in a midfield position. So you could may find yourself in a kind of half cover position. This here negates it and even full cover makes you harder to uh, hit. So if you're going for that hybrid uh, gun plus um, cover removal build, that's the way to go. If you're going for flame uh, thrower build, uh, Napalm Axe is the way to go. Flamethrower also disorients or panics enemies, which is fantastic. Next up, Concussion Rocket, uh, Sergeant Trek. Gives you a special rocket, limited damage, but has a chance to stun or disorient uh, organic enemies um, and leaves a cloud of smoke. You know, it's good. Um, I've used it, but um, the, the core reason why I like uh, rockets is their removal of cover. They are relatively reliable removal of cover. And that rocket just doesn't offer it. Um, if it instead would be one bonus charge of rockets, Hell yeah, I would use it, no problem. But the rocket itself is definitely not as good in my perspective as uh, simply having shredding as a permanent ability, which is just fantastic, specifically once you combine it with rapid fire. Um, so you will see later that this track here, they actually get crazily good um, uh, weapon um, abilities and have a pretty solid uh, progression in aim. Uh, which kind of makes them uh, really good foot soldiers with which just happen to have rockets and flamethrowers on top of it. And that's what makes the class intriguing in my perspective. Finally, Burnout, activation of the flamethrower, uh, leaves a small uh, uh, cloud around your position, providing defense. That's good um, until the point where you realize um, that the enemy can walk into it and also uh, benefit from its, um, from its uh, bonus. But in all honesty, it's not bad. If you go uh, for a flamethrower build, you want to have both of these here. Uh, next up, uh, Staff Sergeant, Tandem Warhands, uh, Granites and Rockets do full damage until the maximum area. So basically no damage fall off. That is pretty damn good. I personally like Formidable better though, because you can also be on the receiving end um, of uh, Rockets. 50% less uh, explosive damage, two additional hit points, just increase your um, survivability. I talked about that in many other guides as well. You got to make sure that you survive the mission first and foremost, period. That's the most important objective. Uh, good defense for your character. So that's why you should build it that way. Uh, phosphorus, flamethrower can now damage mechanical units and uh, shred their armor. That is incredibly good if you're going for that um, uh, flamethrower build. I would say it is like all three of these abilities are fantastic. Um, this here is even better if you're going for that flamethrower. Um, uh, know though that the, uh, with going for that flamethrower build, you're giving up survivability. Tech Sergeant. Uh, javelin rockets, a range of rockets is increased by six tiles. Pretty damn good if you want to trigger that pack out of vision range. Um, uh, specifically good if uh, you trigger a pack of 12 enemies. The problem with those tandem warheads and uh, the javelin rockets and the greater uh, explosion zone is one thing that I personally um, uh, find limiting with uh, using grenades for damage is that long war has uh, an overall cap on the damage that you're dealing. What I mean with that is um, a rocket or a grenade can deal up to its three, four, five uh, points of damage per target, but there is a sum cap um, uh, for the uh, grenades. Let's say basic grenades have a sum cap of 12 or 15, um, uh, which means if you are hitting enough targets, 
the sum of all of the damage of all of the tar that all of the targets are taking cannot exceed that threshold uh, value, which is why you see in my um, run very often that uh, even if I um, uh, even if I hit twelve or fourteen enemies with a uh, uh, warhead, um, it kind of ends up. Uh, to deal one or two points of damage to everyone, uh, even to those in the center of it, um, because of that damage cap. And unless they get rid of uh, that type of uh, limitation, I don't think that uh, grenade damage dealing is near as effective as it had been in the classical games, which is, by the way, why they did it. They massively nerfed it. So for me, grenades are really a, measure, a means of getting... Uh, enemies out of cover, and that's about it, not more. Uh, you deal damage mainly through weapons and through a nice little firefight. Fire and steel attacks with your gauntlets, and uh, uh, and fires are setting uh, uh, set by the gauntlet weapons to one additional uh, point of damage. That's fine, but it falls short to the incinerator, uh, which substantially increases uh, the AOE effect of the flamethrower. The reason why I'm going for this instead of um, the extra tiles for the rockets, which arguably is also okay, is the incinerator, uh, the flamethrower often suffers from its limited range. With incinerator, I feel though that the range is actually big enough uh, to get rid of at least one, often two charges per mission and just add that extra viability if you are in a medium range fighting position. So that's why I would go um, for incinerator only. Of course, if you're focusing on <coughs> the um, flamethrower, you definitely want to have incinerator in here. Next up, salvo. Um, gunnery sergeant rank salvo the way to go uh, not even going to discuss any of the other options shooting and having action economy um, advantages basically shooting and doing something else is just too good it is the s plus ability in here tactical sense which allows you to gain up to 15 defense is nice and i like uh, defensive abilities but not at least as good as salvo and quick burn um, allows you um, if you're it's basically salvo but for your flamethrower which allows you to um, shoot your flamethrower without an action cost so um, depending on what your skill is it's either salvo or quick burn we're playing in this particular case um, an, uh, a gun focused um, a demolition expert uh, who's using his rocket uh, that's why salvo is uh, helpful uh, Salvo also opens up the option to give the character grenades, offering the character to uh, effectively throw a grenade and then, like a flashbang, and then continue fighting afterwards. It's a very, very strong ability. Finally, Master Sergeant rank, Bunker Buster, fires special rockets that destroys buildings and other objects in the environment. Absolutely fantastic for cover removal. Absolutely fantastic for cover removal. So probably the go-to if you need cover removal. I will most likely even take this on uh, the character uh, because I do have um, cyclical fire. The other option is rapid fire if you want the character to continue um, applying that nice little shredder effect um, and continuing to deal damage. I would say in the specific case of this character class, both of them are valid. Um, it depends what you need more. I would, in this case, probably go for the Bunker Buster um, and have the uh, Cyclical Fire for some extra shredding um, and just enjoy the higher um, cover removal, Rapid Fire, um, if you do not have any of the additional abilities. Finally, Firestorm, once per battle, you can uh, attack all units in a complete circle around your soldier's position. If you're fast enough and have a good movement, you can essentially move into the entirety of the aliens, just Nova explode, and uh, yeah, take it from there, go to town. Uh, it's a good ability, um, but I would say the other two abilities are better. My biggest concern with Firestorm is it's an ability uh, that could hit your own uh, soldiers. Of course, if you are like me and you have hazmat vests, you kind of tend to not give a damn, uh, and instead uh, just use it wherever you like. It's a good ability if enemies are clustering up close quarters and so on and so forth. 
So that's it uh, with the technician class. Um, the final uh, build from my recommendation would be find the hole into Fortify, into Shredder, into Formidable, a little bit of a dip into Incinerator to um, get that extra range, definitely into Salvo, and then probably Rapid Fire as the standard. You cannot go wrong with that type of setup. Bunker Buster is the other option if you want more cover removal, which I would take in this case because for me it's still a supportive character class that can use its gun very often, um, but it is even good without a rapid shot. You don't need that to absolutely make it work. Anyways, that's it. Um, and this is the last class uh, that I wanted to cover. If you enjoyed it, um, please feel free to leave a comment uh, down below how you like uh, the technicians and see you in the next guide. Bye-bye.